Welcome to the latest video from the Culture Brewing channel. It's been a while since I've made a video, but I have been brewing a lot of beers since my previous videos, and I've also been working with the Firmzilla pressure fermentation vessels, so I've been experimenting a lot. Um, I've also been experimenting with Quike yeast, mainly Voss, but I've also been had a few brews with Hornindal, um, like big tropical aroma from Hornindal, but I've been focusing on Voss since it's become available in the Lallemand uh, packaging, uh, the, the professional version of the, um, like the professional isolate version of the yeast. Um, previously I was working from eBay, but now I can get hold of this uh, isolate version. I can get it from my homebrew store here in Switzerland. Um, I've been using Voss and frankly I love it. I've used it with all different kinds of styles. I've been brewing stouts and IPAs. I, I brewed a brown ale which was fantastic. Um, I think Voss is a very clean yeast if you use it correctly. You can get like the you know amazing quite esters if you use it without pressure and at the higher temperatures you know above 35 degrees centigrade up to 40. Some people say you get big orange ester flavor. Um, but I've been experimenting with it under pressure because it gives me like that clean um, thing and I, I let the, the, the style and brewing speak so the, so the hops or the, or the malt speak. And I've been quite successful with it. So I've always wanted to brew a lager but I have never got round to it because I've only got two taps on my kegerator and I just can't wait 12 weeks or however long it takes to brew a lager. It's far too long, I'll you know end up running out of beer and then waiting for the lager etc and I only have one fermentation vessel at the moment um, and space for one so I've just been brewing ales predominantly. But I, then I saw the David Heath's brewing video. He made a, a style guide for the Bohemian Pilsner and uh, he mentioned that you could brew it with Quike possibly and so it inspired me to have a go with the Vos Quike. Um, so I'm planning to brew this under, uh, ferment this under pressure, uh, make it nice and clean and hopefully hit the style. Um, I know it's not going to be you know, exact and it's also going to upset some of the purists in terms of pilsners but hopefully I can turn around a bohemian pilsner in say two to three weeks and have it pretty much on style um, so yeah I think I will start by just talking a little bit about the the history of the Czech pilsner I think it's um, one of the most famous and possibly important styles in the beer world just because of its impact and what's happened since it was invented. Um, so the history starts in the mid to early 1800s uh, with brewers in Bohemia which is now no, known as the Czech Republic. Um, the brewers there were mainly brewing ales but they were struggling with wild yeast and bacteria infecting the beer lots of spoilage um, to the point in which in one town I think in 1838 in the town of Pilsen um, all of the breweries ended up tipping out all of the barrels of their spoiled beer and so the situation was um, reaching a, a boiling point that, you know, they kept having issues and so I think they decided that they were going to have a go at the, the lager process which was uh, very popular in Germany and uh, famous in uh, Bavaria in I think that's the southern part of Germany um, so they set about making their own version of a lager uh, they managed to get their hold their hands on the Bavarian lagering yeast uh, some say it was smuggled out by a monk but you know, somehow they got their hands on it and they also hired a Bavarian brewer named Joseph Grohl and set about making the recipe so the lagers from Bavaria Traditionally, they're famous for it to this day. They're usually dark in color. They, they use roasted or smoked malts. Um, but in Bohemia, they have light barley. That's what they, they were used to using. And they decided to design a lager recipe with these light barley malt, which is now known as Pilsner malt. 
um, and they paired it with a locally grown noble hop known as Sars, um, which is very famous. It's it's quite it's a spicy hop. Um, you can use it throughout the, the the brewing process in terms of as aroma, but it can also it's good at bittering. It's a all good all round hop. Um, so they developed this recipe, and when they opened the first barrel, it came out a straw color, which um, and you know it was crystal clear, and this was kind of a revolution in in beer brewing at the time, and it spread all over Europe. This new kind of crystal clear, light colored beer that the people in uh, now modern day Czech Republic had somehow managed to. Uh, produce and it's come all the way to the modern day in which you know modern macro breweries such as Budweiser or Heineken etc there they can trace their history that like the recipe that they use it goes all the way back to Bohemian Pilsner and yes they've you know some say <laughs> you might say they've watered it down they've added rice to their recipe uh, they've reduced the the hops the bitterness etc but the style itself goes all the way back to Bohemian Pilsen. So it's, it, this uh, Bohemian Pilsen style is like one of the biggest styles in brewing history. It changed the brewing world to this day and has become the most popular widespread brewing style um, adapted you know, to these macro brewery styles, which I personally don't drink, but I, you know, it's the most popular beer in the world. Okay, so looking at the style guides, I have these on Google Sheets. I can make them available if you want. Um, but I mean, check out David Heath's channel. He's got some amazing style guide videos. Um, so I've used a lot of his information in some of the styles. But you can also go to the American Brewers Association. They have like the official style guides which are used for competitions, etc. There's a lot of great information in there. Um, so I'll build my recipe from this style guide that I have put together on Google Sheets. Um, you can see that I'm looking for like a traditional Bohemian Pilsner. It's going to be like a complex malt and uh, spicy floral um, Sars hop like beer. So I'm looking for that, that bready aroma and then like a complex malt flavor and then that's paired with like a Bitter, but not too bitter, like well-rounded SARS um, hop bouquet. So, so it's going to be a really refreshing, clean and crisp beer. Um, so I'll show you the recipe that I've put together. Okay, so here it is. I've gone with a 5% ABV, um, and a 60-minute boil. Uh, you can see that it's around 36 IBU, so it's going to be hopefully a rounded bitterness. Um, the color again is hitting the style with 9.3 EBC. Uh, in terms of the malts, I've gone with the Pilsner 2 row because that's what I can get hold of here in Switzerland. Um, I've chosen the Munich malt because it adds a good complexity and not much color. Um, and I like Munich, I use Munich in a lot of my IPAs, etc. Um, I think it's a nice malt to use. Um, I've chosen that over the Vienna. Um, and then, yes, we have the, the carapils for the head retention and, and the body. Um, my local homebrew store doesn't have any biscuit in at the moment, so I've left that out and I've gone with the melanoidin because that's going to impart some good flavors that you know that's traditionally added by the decoction mashing but um, I don't want to do decoction homebrewing it's a it's a long drawn out mash process it can be quite complicated so I'm going with melanoidin because it, it adds the flavors that the decoction should add so I mean it's it's not going to be as good but it's like a good workaround so you, it will add like a rich bready quality to the beer so that's why I've added the the melanoidin so as you can see, I am going with the traditional SARS hops. They're around 3.6%. Um, so I've, I you know, adjusted the IBUs to hit around 36. Uh, the traditional usage of the hops is to add at the start of the boil, and then you add around 10 minutes, and then I'm going to do a 15-minute hop stand. 
to get that aroma, that spiciness, the pepperiness, the floralness of the SARS hops. Um, so it's a, a basic hop um, schedule and it should be on point for the style. So I guess, I mean, the whole point of this video and I, probably why you're here to see it is the fact that I'm going to be using Kvike yeast and this is to speed up the process of producing this Bohemian Pilsner. Um, I think you can knock it out in, in a week, but for me, I find that, especially with Voss, um, one week of fermentation and then one week in the keg, usually um, the beer that I get out of the tap is, um, is very good after two weeks and at its best after three weeks. So that's why I'm saying two to three weeks to produce this Pilsen style. Um, I am using Voss and without pressure and doing ales, you know, IPAs, pale ales, etc., you would typically ferment at around 35 degrees centigrade. Um, the lower you go, the more clean and lager like the profile is for Voss. So I think a good sweet spot is around 24 to 25 degrees Celsius, 25 degrees Celsius, I would say. Um, and I'm also going to be using pressure fermentation so that you're removing all chance of the, the esters and you're just leaving a really clean lager-like beer. So between 12 to 15 PSI in pressure is a good um, PSI to try to hit and try to keep it around 25 degrees. But it's not, you know, you, you're not having to control the temperature like religiously like you would with a normal yeast. Um, Kvike yeast is really versatile with the temperature that you're having. So as long as you're around 25 degrees, I mean, I think when it first started going in the first 24 hours, it might have jumped up to 27 for a bit and came down when it slowed down back to 25. So around 25 degrees is good. You will get a nice clean lager-like beer. That's the the experience I've had in terms of making these beers I've tested all different temperatures with my pale ales and the ones with this uh, lower temperature and this uh, PSI produce a way more kind of lager like beer um, so I think this is going to be spot on it's not going to be the traditional way of making a bohemian pilsner and it's not using the traditional yeast but I mean the tr that's the trade-off but you're going to get a beer that is very similar. Um, I mean, you pro if you give it to your average drinker, they're not going to be able to, to taste the difference probably. Um, and you're going to get that beer in two to three weeks. So, um, yeah, that's the recipe. I will link to the recipe, uh, the Brewfather version, um, in the description below so that you can copy it and then adjust it for the batch volume you want. And it, it will tell you how much... Uh, mash water you need, strike water, etc. Um, and also, you can you'll be able to adjust the the water chemistry to to fit the Bohemian Pilsner water style. So yeah, um, I'll show you the the brew day, and then we'll finish with uh, a tasting of the beer.
Okay, so here it is, uh, the moment of truth. This is week three, the end of week three. It's been in the keg for two weeks now. Um, I had a little look at it after two weeks um, and it looked as clear it is, as it is now. So it was probably ready to drink after two weeks, but I left it in there just to see if I could clear it up a little bit and give it time to, to develop its, uh, its taste and flavor. Um, it looks pretty clear. I don't know if you can see that. See my fingers through it. I didn't do any any um, finings or anything. Uh, I cold crashed it for about three days, um, but the Vosquake um, quite dropped really quickly after it fermented. Um, it was, you know, ready to keg after one week. Uh, it was still quite cloudy after one week, but on the, the second week, once it was in the keg for a week, it was clear as clear as it's going to get. Um, so let's give it a little smell. Okay, yeah, so it smells bready. It's supposed to smell bready, so that, that seems on point. You can get the, the spiciness of the SARS hops. So, um, I mean, I've, I've drunk um, Bohemian Pilsner before, like the, your classic Pilsner, Urkel, etc. It smells just like those beers. It's, it's, it smells promising. Oh! Yes, we, I think we've nailed it on this one. That is perfect. Ooh, it's um, it's like rich, like multi flavor, but then there's that spicy bitterness from the SARS, but it's not too much. It's uh, it's married well with the malt. Um, it's, oh, it's really like crisp and clean. Um, yeah, well, that is spot on for the style, I think. From what I've tasted, it, it it's very similar to the, to the Czech pills I've drunk before. Very pleased with that actually, that has come out really well. Um, and yeah, it's ready, I'd say after two weeks, this is on the third week. Um, instead of waiting, you know, three months or whatever, you do with the normal uh, way of uh, making this Bohemian Pilsner with the with the lagering process. This is with a Norwegian Quike Voss, uh, 12 PSI pressure fermented. Uh, you can't get any of that um, orangey esters from the Voss because of the pressure fermentation. So it's as clean as, as um, a lager you're gonna get, I think. Uh, some people won't be happy with the, the deviation from the, from the style, the brewing process, but I mean, that is spot on. Good enough for, for home brew. Um, oh, I'm definitely brewing this again.